Hey guys, it's Laura from Lightning Cosplay. Long time no see, but today I'm finally back with something I'm working on the last weeks. If you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen my beautiful cat masks and today I'm going to show you how I made them. In this crazy corona times, I had to make a plan on how to earn money without all the conventions because, yeah, we all know all the conventions got cancelled. In case you didn't know, most of our income comes from working for gaming companies and creating costumes for them. So no conventions means no one needs costumes and this means no money for us. But I call myself kind of a creative person and I thought why not creating masks and other cool stuff and sell it in my online shop. And this worked out better than I thought. Since a few weeks now I'm creating these cat masks here and they really saved our business. So um, yeah, as a thank you gift today I'm going to show you how I made them. Let's go! I used Ralph's life cast. I could have used mine, but since my face is kind of small, I was afraid that the mask wouldn't fit other persons. And with Ralph's face as base, I made sure that the mask will fit women and men. For sculpting, I used Monster Clay Medium. It's an oil-based clay, which means it never dries out. To be honest, I can't really explain much about the sculpting process itself. It is just all about finding the right shapes, trying to work symmetrical, and most of the time I don't think much about what I'm doing, I just sculpt and hope for the best. This is by the way one of my favorite tools for blending. It's a self-made tool which I made out of parts of a metal brush. Another tool you definitely will need is a loop tool. I have, uh, I don't know, 20 different loop tools in all kinds of sizes. Smoothing the surface is a long process. One thing you can do is using mineral spirits. I apply it with a brush and use my fingers to smooth everything out. And before you ask, yes, it's sometimes hard to work with these fingernails. After working on the rougher shapes and the surface, I always enjoy working on the details like the teeth. Actually, it was not planned to add the cat ears, but I was sitting there staring at my cat mask and thought there was something missing. So I added the ears and I really liked it. I also added these wrinkles to the forehead to get kind of a Swings cat look. I really love Swings cats, they give me these ancient Egyptian vibes. And for those of you who don't know, I even have a tattoo of the Egyptian cat goddess, which looks like a Swings cat. But it's not finished yet. One day I'll make a video where I'll show you all of my tattoos. The very last step is to heat up the surface with a heat gun. But be very careful, it melts the clay fast and it can destroy all your details. So let's go on with some mold making porn. For molding the mask I use Reborn 25, which is a brush on silicone from Smoothon. I'll put all the materials I used in the video description. As you can see I removed the fangs because they will be molded and casted separately. I applied the first layer of silicone with a brush. The first layer is the most important one and you have to make sure that the silicone captures all the details on the surface. To build up the next layer, I thickened the silicone with Thevex. So, after I let the first layer cure for an hour, I started to add more layers of silicone. As you can see, the Thevex makes the silicone more paste-like, which makes it easier to build up a nice and thick mold. Before going on with the mold jacket, I added clay to the undercuts because I was not sure if they will make problems in the demolding process. To separate the shell, I built a wall with aluminum foil and aluminum tape. Then I started to apply the first layer of epoxy resin. This grey stuff here is epoxy coat from Smoothon. I let the first layer cure for 1-2 to two hours and then went on with the next layers. I like to use epoxamide and fiberglass cloth to get a strong but lightweight mold jacket. 
the first half need to cure overnight. On the next day I removed the aluminum foil and made the second half of the mold jacket, just exactly like the other one. The combination of epoxy resin and fiberglass creates some very sharp edges. So before you can handle your mold you need to clean up and sand the edges and the whole surface. Popsicle sticks are perfect to crack open the mold. And now it's time to remove the silicone and then the mold is finally done. This is a tiny block mold I made for the fangs. I used the same silicone I used for the mask. I have shown you this casting process in some of my previous videos, but for those of you who haven't seen this before, this technique is called slush casting or roto casting. You add several layers of resin until you get a nice and even coat on the entire inside of the mold. For that I like to use Smoothcast 65D, which cures white. After the resin is fully cured, it's time for demolding. I remove the flashing on the edges by hand and with an X-Acto knife. For the eye part I used the Dremel. The fangs were also casted with the same resin and glued to the mask with epoxy glue. And ta-da! Done! Well, not really, the mask still needs an awesome paint job. I painted this mask in many different styles, but I will show you how I make it look like bone. I start with a light base sand color. Then I start to apply a coat of brown wash and dab the raised areas with a paper towel. I continue doing this until I'm happy. You can also work with different shades of brown wash. So, I'm happy, let's go on with the details. Use the darker brown to bring out all the details like the nose part and the teeth. The last step is to dry brush the whole mask with a warm white to bring back the bone color and also to get more contrast and bring out all the details of the mask. I did so many different versions of this mask. It is fascinating to see how many different looks and styles you can achieve only with paint. So far I made over 70 masks which I sold in my shop and I'm still motivated to make more. I always have new ideas how to paint them. There are already so many new ideas in my mind which mask designs I want to make next and a lot of people already ask for a wolf, deer, fox, bird and dragon skull masks. So let's see what I will do next. The masks turned out so good and they fit to my face and of course also to Ralph's face. I'm so happy that my cat masks are so popular and always sell out in minutes. This just really saved our business during these crazy corona times. So thanks to everyone who bought a mask and supported us. And I'm sorry to those of you who couldn't get one, but I'm gonna make more of them, I promise. And if you can't wait, now you have seen the full process and can make your own mask. So I think that's it for today. I hope you had fun and also learned something. And I would really appreciate if you hit the like button, subscribe to our channel and then hopefully see you next time. Stay safe. Bye bye.